Welcome to Hello Self. It's a podcast focused on turning your cans into cans and your dreams into plans. I am your host, coach, and author, Patricia Leonard. Well, welcome today. I'm so excited about this podcast that and my guest that is here today. And I guarantee you, you're going to be excited too. She's got so much to share about turning your cans into cans, because that's what this podcast is all about, is going after what we want. I'm saying that this is the time to get your dreams and goals off that someday shelf. And Jamie is here to show you, my guest will show you how she's done it for herself. So I'd like to start out with just a little bit about who my guest is. First of all, welcoming her. Thank you for being here. Her name is Jamie Simpson. Thank you. Hi. Hello. (laughs) And, um, She's got so much uh, professional background and entrepreneurship and um, had her own business for a number of years. Besides that, she'll probably tell you because I'm not going to give her story to you. I'm simply going to hit a few high notes from her resume that she sent me. And it'll it'll uh, tempt you to want to stay and listen to everything because she will take her story from wherever point she wants in her life. And I recommend that the best gift that I can give my audience on here is the story, the real true story, because I believe in every story, there are lots of gifts and endless glories. So let's get started. And I'll just start out a little bit about Jamie from her resume, and then she'll tell you the real story. (laughs) She's got a background. Well, first of all, she's got a background, I said, in running her own business for a number of years. But prior to that, she was in corporate America. She's got a background in project management. She uh, was a reflexologist and probably still is. She'll tell you more. and has got a background in finance and uh, corporate training. And she's run her own business in setting up process improvement, technology background. This woman has it all in such a short period of time in her life. She's one of those kind that does not sit still. She's always remaking herself over. So that'll just give you a flavor of who Jamie Simpson is. She's from Indianapolis, Indiana, and um, she's a photographer now. And she may even tell you about some new ideas she has. So, Jamie, could you just give us your story the way you want, starting from when you were a little girl or whatever point you want to start, and then a little bit about who you are as a human being? I, like you said, I'm currently a photographer, started my photography business officially in 2008. But when I was eight years old, back in the 80s, I started with photography then. And what happened was grandmother gave me one of her old uh, cameras. And this was back in the day of film. And so I was the dork that ran around everywhere with camera in hand, took pictures of absolutely everything, loved it. Did it in 4-H, uh, took all the high school classes I could in the dark room. But, you know, I went through high school being told, well, you know, you don't want to be a starving artist. You don't want to you don't want to do that. You need to go get a degree, go the safe route. So, you know, I did all of that and had all of these detours. I think the only thing you left out <laughs> was that and we talk about this all the time is that for a time. I was in an all girl band that traveled around and sang and and played at all kinds of events. Right. So apparently that was how I got my, my creativity fix then. So I kind of got away from photography. I, I, like you said, I was went into corporate world. I found out that I was really good at sales. I was really good at managing other people and teaching them. And, but I just got bored and, and it, 
came to a point where uh, I ended up married and we started having kids and I went back to school and got my master's degree in public affairs and I was going to go to law school and uh, because I've, I've got a bleeding heart for the, the innocence project and the people that are wrongfully convicted. So I really wanted to do something with that. Well, you know, God had different plans. I ended up pregnant with the first baby and here we are. Uh, I, I wanted to continue to contribute financially to the household. And when we started getting pictures taken of our kids when they were little, I looked at my husband and I said, you know, I can do this. I've gotten away from it for, for several years, but I know that I know what I'm doing. And so I went and bought a little $600 camera, taught myself the differences between the digital and the film and have just grown it over the past well it's been 12 almost actually almost 15 years right 2008 and it's almost 2023 yes. yes so here we are um but yeah I so that's kind of been my journey getting to where I am professionally um personally I'm I'm happily married have been for 15 years and uh, we have three kids we live in a little town called Franklin about 20 minutes south of Indianapolis and have a couple horses bunch of dogs living living the dream so uh and most recently we're we're talking about possibly moving down to the coast so um but right now my day my day today is I I specialize in posed newborn sessions in the studio. Sorry, there's a... Sorry, and they're really beautiful. Those ch- <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And, uh, but the newborns and the maternity. And when I, when I took the business full time in, I think it was 2017. So I had been doing this kind of part time here and there between maintaining a household, raising three kids, getting them back right. and forth to school. And I had a boarding business where I had 15 horses on my property, other people's horses that they were boarding there that I was taking care of. And the the photography had kind of started to snowball. And when my youngest went to kindergarten, I shut down the boarding business and decided to take the photography full time. And that's when I really had my come to Jesus moment. Hello, self moment, you know. Yes. Um, and it was. It took less than a year and I was very close to burnout. I was making decent money, but I was working, you know, 50 to 80 hours a week, all hours of the weekend. Um, I was up editing until midnight to 1 a.m. sometimes and then getting up the next morning and handling the kids' morning schedules, you know. And so I just kind of saw the writing on the wall and figured I've got to figure out how to be one of these photographers that I see on YouTube that are Facebook famous, that are, that are Google famous, you know, that, that are, that I see on the TV shows, like how are they demanding upper echelon pricing when my product is very similar to that? How do I, where's the gap? And I think that's one of the big lessons that, uh, I mean, my first big lesson was that if I wouldn't have, been fearful of what the future held and not listen to other people and not been afraid of failing because I got news. We're all going to fail. Right. I mean, not every time. (laughs) And we all have that fear, don't we? Every one of us, no matter. Yes. 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 But, but that's how we grow, right? Because there's, there's no way to avoid failing at least sometimes. But what happens in those failures is that you're learning these lessons that are invaluable. You never would have learned it any other way. And so, you know, my second big lesson was that, that really what I need to do is talk to these people that are in this position that I want to be in and get the, get the cliff notes. I mean, Mm. these people have all of this information and, you know, it's like taking a college course in whatever it is that you're trying to don't be afraid to ask these people that have been there and done that. You're not their competition. You know, they, they are going to know things like that, that. that you don't yet. Um, so I got into a coaching program and I'll tell you what they, 
at the time, I was charging $175 for an hour-long service and basically giving away everything but the kitchen sink with it, right? I was one of these um, shoot and burn photographers. Here's mm-hmm. all your digital files. And it would probably take me about 10 hours to work on these photos and deliver them. And I got on to this onboarding call with this photography coach. And this gal told me, she said, I, I charge $1,500 to walk in the door. That's my, that's what people pay to come see me for like an hour long session. And I said, that sounds like you're just making stuff up. I don't believe you. Like, there's no way this isn't possible. I, you're talking about 10 times what I'm charging. Right? And we sometimes and, think in our community, nobody would pay that, right? We sometimes oh, yeah, think, think yes. That. Yes. But these are the same people that, that um, you know, they've got a $700 car payment every month. They've got a new $500 designer purse every season. They buy a new $1,000 iPhone every time it comes out. These people have the money. Yes. It's, it's the question is, what do they value, right? You have to give exactly them that value. Right. So, so I, I went through this and I just, you know, instead of throwing everything against the wall to see what sticks, I, I took everything that this personal coach of mine told me to do. And I started, I started doing some real soul, soul searching about, you know, I love photography. I love what I'm doing, but it's got to fit within my daily schedule. I can't work this schedule anymore. And so, you know, what's my niche going to be? What can I do that while the kids are at school? And it was my husband who looked at me after spending a week going through this. And he said, it's babies, honey. I said, what? I said, those are the hardest thing that I've ever taken pictures of. Like it's the hardest and most dangerous thing to photograph. And he was like, no, he goes, every time you do a session with a baby, you come home absolutely glowing. You can't wait to talk about it. You can't wait to show people the pictures. Like that is the answer. That's how I got down to where, okay, I'm going to focus on newborns. And you know, Jamie, that is exactly, I followed your business for quite some time. And that's the thing that intrigued me about all the photography you've done is the babies. I mean, it is so, number one, emotional. Number two, the way you package them. I, you know, I've said this to you many times. You bring out and no parent is going to say that's not valuable even when they're small and when they get older. So that is some of the reasons that I saw your business growing and have started following you a lot recently. So I didn't want to cut in on your story because I love what you're saying. However, I just wanted to emphasize that particular thing that you and your husband talked about, the baby thing, because I think, was that a big shift in your business? It was because at that point in time, newborns only made up about 10% of my business. Mm -hmm. And now they make up about 85%. I still shoot other things and I still really love doing like weddings, but I don't, I don't work weekends. I don't work nights. Uh, I don't, you know, I don't do any of that. I mean, very rarely do I. Babies go to bed at eight o'clock, right? (laughs) Exactly. And so I have babies, they come in and, and now I'm to the point where not only do I choose my hours, but I'm, I, a full week, week for me is 10 to 20 hours. Um, I've, I've got my systems in place and automated them and outsourced things that made sense. And I'll tell you a couple books that, that I think are really valuable for all of that stuff if you want. But, um, yeah, I got all of that stuff in place. And now I have an amazing assistant that handles my social media. I pretty much, I just walk into my studio five minutes before shoot time. I mean, I've talked to the client on the phone before. And so I get to take the pictures and then I send them to my assistant, do initial edits. And now what used to take me 10 hours takes me an hour and a half. So all of you listening, If you think that she had all this planned out before she started, what she's telling you is, no, it was a step-by-step and it was 
those hello moments that seem to say, I want something different. And she started looking at her time. And I really like that a lot. I like something that you said. And I think our audience really uh, could benefit by this a lot. And that is you had to start valuing your own product in order to have others value it. And I think that is an issue specifically for women in the business world and as entrepreneurs. I've been a coach for a number of years and I went through that very same thing. How do I charge? And I just met with a woman uh, this week and she too is a photographer and she's been struggling and she was mad at herself because she doesn't pay or she doesn't charge uh, what she really thinks she's worth. And she's been very frustrated with how do I move that to the next level? So I'm really anxious for her to listen to this because I think that these are some great um, insights, if you will, to inspire people to move forward. Um, you said something about, um, I really liked uh, your note about your music. And I like the diversity. Tell me, how you see all these things connected that have now created your platform of where you are. How has all of those things that you've done, even being a mother? Right. So I'll tell you what, like there's, there's nothing like life, real mm -hmm. life to, you know, to gather experience. And, and there's a, my dad used to joke that I was a, a jack of all trades, master of none. Yes. Um, my, my resume and my history looked a lot like the Forrest Gump movie, you know, like, mm. oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> you were a rock star, you were a massage therapist, you're a photographer, you were in fit, like, no, no way. Um, but, it, but I'll tell you what it is, is that, that I think that I can, I can relate to a lot more people, which is super important. Um, with any small business owner that's in a service industry, right? Um, and 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 I, it excites me because there's always something new to learn. So if I start to get bored with anything, you know what what am I gonna what am I gonna do now? And I think that the thing that being a musician helped me with was. I have zero issue being the center of attention or on stage or, but what that, what that means also in the business world is that like, it's okay for somebody to get upset with me or it, it helps me to avoid imposter syndrome, which is like what you were just saying, like, how can I possibly charge what I'm worth? You know? So all of those things kind of get rolled into one. And then now as a mom, the babies just come natural to me. And I have families come in and they're like, yes. oh my goodness, you're a, you're a baby whisperer. Like, how do you know to do these things? How do you, because I remember being the first time mom where you've had zero sleep. You're certain you're going to lose your mind. You want nothing to do with anybody. You want somebody just to take this baby off your hands so that you can get a full night's sleep. Uh, if you're nursing them, that's a whole nother load of problems on there. And now I have to keep this little thing alive. I don't know what I'm doing. They just put it in a car seat That's in my car right. and I'm headed home. And what, it, you know? Yes. So <laughs> And so I get it because I've been there. And then, and now my oldest is 12. My youngest is nine. So my kids are, we're entering the super fun preteen and teen years. And so I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting part of that too. Uh, but I've had clients that I've followed from, you know, nine, 10 years old too. Some of them are married now. And I see, you know, the, the struggles that those families go through. Yes. And the events that they have that are really important to them. And, and I think that all of those things rolled up into one. It's, even though it sounds unbelievable, it, it, maybe it didn't always make sense. Along the way, I knew that these doors were being opened to me for a reason. And it helped me build a humongous network and there was always a gem or two that I got from every one of those experiences. Uh, I know you and I have had these conversations before in the past about how, you know, I could probably write 
three or four different books about oh, yes, these different definitely. I'm sure that's something that's going to come later too. <laughs> I know that's a whole nother, yeah. So well, what I like about what you're saying is it it wasn't like jumping from position to position or job to job, even though some people see it as a jack of all trades and confused about who we are. What you saw was following your heart or your hello self conversations and building a platform. And some people will stay in their comfort zone once they get there and just say, well, I better be grateful that I'm here and I'm doing this versus what you did was explore and you created a platform now that you said gave you a client base, gave you um, a, a, a lack of fear for stepping up in front of somebody, taking your business and running with it and getting the advice of others. I think that is a great um, offering to our listeners today too is sometimes uh, we're afraid that they'll see it as competition and you mentioned that I, I something that I remember years ago I wrote a paper about and I think that we need to see that nobody is competition it's only in our head that they're just people doing their business or doing their thing and I really liked your comment about that I think that's very important to let go of my competition, unless you said I can learn from them. And you did. Right. And here's the other thing is that, you know, I see so many other photographers or business owners that I talked to or I've mentored in the past that they waste so much time worried about what the, the competing business is doing down the street, Right. Um, because they're selling the same product and they're worried about what price they're giving and what their latest, what their latest mini sessions mm. are this fall and what kind of theme they're selling and what, what is all included. And, and I'm constantly telling them if you would spend the same amount of time and energy just funneled into your personal business and talent and education and growing that and not worrying about them because you can be in the same industry. Yes. You've got Walmart and Meyer. They do the same thing, right? Yes. They have completely different client bases. So you you have to really dial in to who your specific client base is and then figure out. And once you do that, you'll be able to tell how you're going to market to them, right? Because you know what social media they use. You know whether they value price over quality, or experience over, you know, a speed. So, yeah. I mean, it's all of those things rolled into one that, and yet this is another thing that if I'd have known this 20 years ago, I mean, imagine where I'd be, but. I know. <laughs> yeah. big, so you can't, that, that big if question always stands there. Yeah. But you know what? You wouldn't have had all that you've got today you mentioned something else that I'd like to expand a little bit on because as there will be mothers listening and fathers listening, and I really like the fact that you told your children's age. And But here's another thing. As a mother, as an entrepreneur, as a partner in a marriage, what are you teaching your children and what value does this bring to them to see you stepping out and following your own heart, the conversations with self you're taking serious and making something out of it? So what is that teaching your family, your children? So, so one thing in our household that our kids have always known is that, uh, God comes first and then it's my husband and I's marriage and then it's the kids. Right. Yes. And, and all three of those things will always come before work, before our careers, before our businesses, we would torch everything else. If it meant any, you know, if it meant not keeping all of that core together. So yes. my kids have always, always known that from the time they were this big, you know, they, they know that, that my husband outranks them. They know that I outrank them <laughs> and that God outranks it all, right? Because if mom, if mommy and daddy aren't happy, ain't nobody happy. And so, 
But the the other thing is that now I've got, you know, two, my two older ones are kind of to the point where, you know, they're in middle school where they're starting to think, well, what might I want to do with myself, right? Like, what are what are some of my talents or my interests that I want to expand upon? And I encourage them all the time, really think about this, pay attention when you like really enjoy a game or a show or a cooking show or, or, you know, some other activity that you're doing. Is that something that might lead to, you know, you being a fighter pilot one day or, you know, having your own cooking show, what, whatever it is, because I've, because of what I went through, the last thing I'm going to do is tell my kids that, hey, you you better plan on going to college. You're going to have to go to college and get that degree. Absolutely not. If you have something that's a, that's a viable talent and you are able to put the time and work into it, I will do everything I can to, you know, help you get there. And my kids are already thinking that way. And it, And I think we've actually been talking the last, we homeschooled the kids for two years during COVID. And we, I put them through an investment course. So all three of my kids already have investment um, accounts, right? Where they're invested in the market. They're watching things happen. And they, we've been encouraging them to already start putting business plans together, whether it's selling something online or, or, you know, baked goods at the farmer's market or whatever it is, or maybe you're mowing the neighbor's lawns. I think that that's, it's something that's been lost over the last few years. There's very few kids that do that or have any kind of experience like that. And and they see that, I mean, my husband's also a small business owner. So they see that we don't need to work nine to five to get a paycheck, right? We, we create that. So I think it'll be, it'll be really interesting to see what they end up doing with their lives. I'm really excited because you've got very outgoing children. And I like the fact that they're in, is that 4-H that they're in uh, when they go to the field? Yes. Mm -hmm. So they're getting some grounding about everything. Uh, My grandchildren grew up in uh, the city, so they don't have as much understanding about that kind of thing. And I try to send them stuff, but I really like that. I really like the, the fact that, um, the homeschooling. I know COVID wasn't a good idea, but homeschooling really made the family come together and sit down and think about things other than meeting schedules and running from here and there. I think it's funny when I called or text Jamie about being on this uh, podcast, I said, uh, could we talk uh, maybe today about being on the podcast and she said what about tomorrow I've got 8,000 things I need to do with the kids today (laughs) so she's a very busy mom as well as running her own business I wanted to ask is there anything else you wanted to share uh, on here today any specifics otherwise I have a couple more questions uh, I think I hit the the big point. But the only other thing that I kind of um, was going to mention is that when when I kind of had that big hello self moment in 2018, I think when I had the coach yes. and um, everything seemed completely unattainable and completely ridiculous and there's no way that would ever happen. I got really serious about doing everything that I could to become the best photographer I knew how and the best business owner I knew how to fit within these parameters that I set. And one of the things that I started doing outside of school setting uh, and the regular, you know, putting your business plan together and where I want to be in so many months or weeks or years, I started getting up early every morning for about three months great. I would get up at like 5.30 and I would spend an hour before my family got up just getting my mindset correct and having gratitude, expressing gratitude toward God or the universe or you know energy or whatever it is that means the most to you uh, for everything that I already did have. Right? Yes. So I think that expressing gratitude for those things kind of ensures you that, you know what, I'm okay. I really have all that I 
really need. And so now I don't have a reason to fear the failure because Mm -hmm. we can only go up. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I I think that that's, I think that kind of helps with the mindset, getting everything correct in your brain Mm -hmm. and aligned to where you're ready to go as a, as a business owner, regardless of what it's in. So. I I agree 100%. A very important point. We have to have conversations with ourselves and our God and quiet moments like that. Otherwise, we get we become controlled by the noise in the world and by the events that are going on. And I really like that. Some people get up and exercise. Some people go for long walks. And But I think what you said is a key piece of advice for our listeners today, that if you don't take care of yourself, you can't take care of anybody else or you can't have a business that's going to be successful. It all begins. I like Stephen Covey's model, uh, Circles of Influence. You cannot uh, mm-hmm. influence those things around you, your family, your business and others, clients, unless you start with yourself first. So everything is it begins with you. And I really like that for taking care of ourselves first. And I think this is probably an issue that a lot of women have too. They feel like that they have to do this and this and this and this for the family. And then they're last. So I really like that uh, that piece of advice that you gave. And the second part of that, your gratitude. It's so important to be grateful for everything that moves forward for us and to remember where that comes from. So this is absolutely um, fantastic. And I'm sure that our listeners are saying to themselves, you know, I'm afraid, but today helped me get across another hump. And I just think that's what we need to hear is motivational things. Doesn't mean everything's perfect. But it does mean that you don't get up. So if you're sitting there trying to decide whether you should do something, remember, take those things off that someday shelf and do them now. Okay, Jamie, um, I wanted to close out with um, any other, well, you gave some uh, piece of advice, but any way that somebody could get a hold. Oh, no, there's one other thing I wanted to ask you. What is your next? adventure do you have one yes so we have I know so so we are moving more towards when I say we I mean me and my assistant I have now fully trained her to do to act as an associate photographer for all kinds of sessions except for newborns I still am the only one that does those but I'm moving more towards uh coaching um, educational clinics, speaking engagements uh, for both photographers and photographer groups, as well as, you know, people that are struggling in their small businesses, or they're wanting to start a new small business. I mean, I've, like you said, I've, I've owned several over the years. Uh, I, I didn't completely fail at any of them. So I've got, I've got lots of background there. Right. Um, but yeah, that's the next, that's the next step. So we're, we're currently recording, you know, YouTube videos, building that channel up, probably going to start a new website for the coaching. Um, but yeah, that's, that's next on my list. I want to, I want to start, I want to start speaking to people. Bravo. That is And as you see, Jamie's always got some next that she's doing. So she continues to evolve. So any of you that are are in an organization or thinking about um, the training to be a photographer or to be assistant in a studio, I think that we need to give them what your contact information is now and get a hold of her and bring her in to do some speaking in your organization or a webinar or some kind of program that maybe even takes the photographers in your organization to the next level. So Jamie, how can they get a hold of you, your website and anything, your phone number or whatever you want to give any way that they could reach you? 
So the best way to reach me is probably through my website, which is J Simpson Photography. And when I say J, that's just the letter J Simpson, S I M P S O N photography.com. There's a contact page there. That's the easiest way to get me. You can also call me directly at 317-459-3433. You can find me on Facebook. You can find me on Instagram. Um, I think I'm on Pinterest too. Uh, yes, I am. All of those are under J Simpson Photography. So, uh, and my email is Jamie at J Simpson Photography and Jamie is spelled J-A-M-I-E. So any of those are the best way to get me. Well, fantastic. So you can um, plan to get this on your schedule for 2023 because Jamie will be putting out more information about her next level of growth in her own personal business, specifically with speaking and educating. Jamie, I cannot say how thankful I am that you joined us today. You gave so many insights about great fullness and about continuing even when you feel like you don't know where you're going. So thank you for joining us today. Again, I'm Patricia Leonard, your host on Hello Self Podcast. Thank you for joining Hello Self today and may it offer insights and inspire you to stay on your runway to success. Like, share, and subscribe. And remember this, keep dreaming.